This video is how to install Linux Mint 17.2 Rafaela Cinnamon Desktop into VirtualBox. The outcomes for this video would be to download Linux Mint 17.2 Rafaela Cinnamon, verify that Linux Mint 17.2 Rafaela MD5 checksum on a Windows host. This is optional and you may not wish to do this, but if you want to be 100% sure your downloaded file is not corrupted, this is how you do it. Then create a virtual guest for a 64-bit Linux Mint 17.2 Rafaela Cinnamon. Then install Linux Mint 17.2 and finally update Linux Mint 17.2. Requirements an internet connection, VirtualBox installed on a host computer, an x86 virtual processor 32-bit for 32-bit Mint or 64 bit processor for 64 bit mint 512 gigabytes of ram 1 gigabytes recommended i don't know if it'll actually run well with 512 and i would actually go with 2 gigabytes if possible 9 gigabytes disk space i recommend going with at least 20 gigabytes of disk space because you will not be able to download any programs with 9 gigabytes of disk space 1024 by 768 graphics recommended and you can go for a higher graphics card if you've got one. Enough memory to run both the host computer and a Linux Mint guest. I'm using the MS File Checksum Integrity Verifier FCIV installed on Windows host computer. You have to use this if you wish to verify your downloaded file checksum. If this is not something that you want to do, you can skip this step. Additional info, I've got the Linux Mint download page, additional Linux Mint documentation. I've got a YouTube link here that will actually go to how to uh, install the FCIV file from Microsoft on a Windows host, and then the download page from the Microsoft file checksum integrity verifier. And disclaimer, while this video demonstrates an actual install of Linux Mint 17.2, I can't fully verify that this will work with all combinations of hardware and software out there. So if you wish, you can stop the video and read disclaimer. Here I am at the Linux Mint homepage. And the first step in installing Linux Mint Rafaela into VirtualBox will be to download the ISO file. To do that, I would go to the download page. And in this case, I'm going to download the Cinnamon edition and the 64-bit. So I've go down here to Cinnamon, 32-bit, 64-bit, Cinnamon desktop. Click on here. Once I get to this page here, I'm going to need to find a server, in my case, in the United States. And I'm going to pick James Madison University. That looks like it's about the closest to where I'm at. Click on here and then save the file. In my case, I'm going to go to a downloads directory that I use. But wherever you download, make sure that you can get back to it because you're going to need it. In my case, I use Linux Mint, Cinnamon Desktop, and this is where I download my Cinnamon desktops. Click Save. Now if you notice it says 20 minutes, 19, 17 minutes here. When it's downloaded I'll come back and deal with the uh, file checksum. Here I am with about six seconds left. With that blue arrow that means the ISO file for Linux Mint Cinnamon is downloaded. Verify this. I could simply go to the download directory. And there it is, Linux Mint 17.2 Cinnamon 64-bit. In this section, I'm going to verify the checksum for downloaded Linux Mint Cinnamon ISO file on a Windows host. The first thing I'm going to do is take the MD5 checksum right here, copy it, and paste it into a notepad document.
right click paste and then save it file save as and I'm going to save it exact same directory where I downloaded the cinnamon desktop or this 64-bit Linux Mint 17.2 I'm just going to call it MD5 checksum now I don't have to save it it just makes it a little bit easier to look over the checksum click Save and I'm going to close it file exit and next thing I'm going to do is open up an MS-DOS prompt command prompt MS-DOS command prompt and I'm going to make sure that it's in the same place where I downloaded my Cinnamon desktop. Let's do a DIR. And here's my MD5 checksum.txt that I created and my Linux Mint 17.2 Cinnamon that I've downloaded, ISO file that I've downloaded before. So if I want to I could just use the Microsoft File Checksum Integrity Verifier tool, which I previously installed, and go look for the MD5 Checksum seventeen dash two. Let's get that right. Seventeen point two. And it takes a while, and it'll spin it out, and then I can compare this number right here directly with the downloaded MD5 checksum. But if I put it into the MD5 checksum text file, it lines everything up perfectly, makes it easier, a little bit easier to see. In order to do that, I would use the same thing and then I would append it to the MD5 check sum.txt file. I'm going to append this to the MD5 check sum text file and hit enter. Now if I open up my notepad file here it is just open it up and you'll notice that I've got two numbers here and if they're both the same it's easier to check but if I want to use it command line to check everything I can do it one more step make it easier and if and then dash I which means ignore case and then I'll come up here and this is the checksum that I copied from the download website paste then I put in two equals equal equal and then I come back to my notepad file and this is the checksum that was written by the FCIV program do a copy and again, I'm going to do a paste. Move this over here a little more. Give me a little more room. I'm going to say if it's if the two echo match, and if they don't match up, else got to put in my parentheses. Echo no match and hit enter so you'll see that they match and just to verify that this is actually working I'm going to go back here oh let me put in instead of a B here I'll put in a three and then hit enter and you'll see that there's no match so that goes one step further and makes it automatic and that's how to verify that the ISO file has not been corrupted during the download using a checksum. In this section I'm in VirtualBox and I'm going to create a new virtual machine to install the ISO file on or the Linux Mint download on. I'll click New and I'm going to name it Base Mint 
to 01. And you can name it whatever you wish. So Linux, and I'm going to use Ubuntu 64-bit because there is no Linux Mint on here. So Ubuntu is the closest. Click Next. And I'm going to go to 1 gigabyte of RAM of memory, 1024 megabytes. If you have 2 gigabytes, use 2 gigabytes. Remember that the amount of memory your virtual machine can use is determined about how much your host computer has and how much the host computer's operating system requires. I'm going to create a virtual hard drive now. Click on Create. If you're just using this by itself, I would stick with VDI. I manipulate these virtual machines, so I'm going to use VMDK. But this is the preferred VDI, Virtual Box Disk Image. Click Next. And I'm going to use Dynamically Allocated because this uses less space on the hard drive. Click Next. And instead of 8 gigabytes, I'm going to increase 20 gigabytes. Create. Some other settings I'm going to do. I'm going to go to System. I could give it another processor, but I'm not. I'm going to enable PAE NX. This is very important if you have a 32-bit machine and you've got more than uh, 3 gigabytes of RAM that you're assigning it to for Ubuntu. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to Display. I'm going to enable 3D acceleration. Give it as much as I can. 128 megabytes. Click OK. And Storage. I'm going to have to tell this virtual machine where to find the ISO file or the Linux Mint file that was downloaded. Click on Empty. And I'm going to go to Choose a Virtual. In my case it comes right here. 17.2. Click on Open. Wherever you've downloaded it, click OK. So I'm ready to go. Here I'm ready to start Basement 17.2.0.1. Right click on it, start. Up pops Oracle VirtualBox, and then we do an automatic boot in five seconds or so. I'm going to expand this screen because I won't need the uh, VirtualBox manager at this time. After about a minute and a half on my computer, up comes the screen. And then I'm going to go over here where it says Install Linux Mint and then right click and simply open. And it should install on the virtual machine that created. And you've got a choice here of language. And mine is English. Continue. So I have both of these qualifications. I have 9.5 gigabytes and I've connect I am connected to the internet. Continue. And I'm simply going to erase the disk and install Linux Mint. And this is on my virtual machine disk. There's nothing on it. It's a 20 gigabyte disk I've just created. And then it asks right to change it to disk and then continue picks up where my time zone is. You can change this if you need. Just simply drag it around. Continue again. Keyboard layout. I'm going to take the default here. English US and then English in English US. And you've got Cherokee, Colmark, Macintosh. But I'm just going to hit continue. I'm going to have a login. If you recall the uh, 17201 was the uh, name I used with VirtualBox. If you don't know what it is, you can find it up at the top left of your screen. And I'm going to use a password here. And 
Unfortunately, it's going to be a weak password because I have a lot of virtual machines that I don't really depend on or for demonstration purposes. I can't remember all the passwords, so I use a fairly common weak password. But you should use one that's strong, that uses numbers, letters, and special characters like a star. And I also require a password to log in. Continue. And now we've got a slideshow that you can view while you're downloading and installing. In my case, I'm just going to go through it here. Browse the web. Firefox, Flash, and Java. Now both of Flash is not being currently installed on a lot of Linux applications, but it's still with Linux Mint. I really don't know how this is going to play out because Firefox currently is and Flash are not getting along. And that came about after the 17.2 version of Linux Mint was made. So let's go on. Music and CDs, Banshee, Audio Codex. You, you can listen to some sounds, MP3. Videos, here you got video. I forget what VLC stands for, but that also is used on Windows, so that one I'm familiar with. And manage your photos, there's G-Thumb, which I have not used, but it's free. And you've got contact software, Thunderbird, Pigeon, and HexChat. And then you've got your LibreOffice suite, and also some PDF support. It says here you can browse through 30,000 free applications from the software manager. I think it's above 40,000 currently. And you can run Windows software. They're talking about Wine. You can run VirtualBox inside Linux Mint and then run a Windows machine inside Linux Mint. I haven't run a Linux machine inside Linux Mint, but I have inside Ubuntu, and there's really no problem with it. You can play around and customize your desktop. Keep your system up to date. There's an update manager. I'm going to discuss that. That's one of the things I'm going to do after the install is finished. And then you can find some help. And that's pretty much it for the slideshow. I'll come back when the next new screen requires some assistance. After a while, this window pops up. Installation complete. I can continue testing or restart now. I'm going to click on Restart Now. Now sometimes it does not restart and you're going to have to go up to the VirtualBox Manager menu and actually make it power off. In this case I'm going to wait about another 15 seconds and see what happens. Okay, I've waited 15 seconds. I'd suggest you just wait about 30 seconds. If nothing happens here, then we go up here to the top right machine and click on Close. I'm sorry, top left that would be. And power off the machine. Click OK. Let's start it again to make sure that everything is OK. So what you're seeing is an actual install. So if it's not OK, you'll find out. After about a minute or two, actually after about two to three minutes, I can log in. Click OK. Oh, one thing here, you may want to choose what session, and if you've got enough hardware to run your Cinnamon desktop, use that, and Cinnamon rendering software, that's basically software. I'm simply going to click here on Cinnamon, and then you'll see it's got CI, and then I'm going to click OK for me logging in. And now it's asking for my password. And then I click OK. And again, I've got a little bit of a wait before continuing. And this is normal on the first start. If you continue to have this problem, I would suggest giving it more random access memory. If you can afford it. Here we go. We've got a welcome screen. So now you have Linux Mint installed in a virtual machine. Now that Linux Mint is installed, the one thing I want to do is update it. And I'm just simply going to go down here, go to the menu, and key in Update. And you'll notice Update Manager pops up. Click on the Update Manager. And it says Mint Update. 
make sure it's selected and simply click on install updates. This is going to be a two-step process. Authentication. Ask for your password. And it's going to trundle for a while. But each time it comes to a new screen, you'll be able to see it. Again, I'm going to have to install updates. Okay, now we've got a list of updates here. It looks like everything's going to be installed. Let's go to Edit, I think, Preferences. And you've got Levels. Always show security updates. I'm going to set Always Select and Trust Security Updates and Always Show Them. And the reason for Always Select and Trust Security Updates is because the update manager, you've got five levels of updates and they always install the first three and then they allow you to choose whether you want to install four and five. But as far as uh, four or five security updates, I'd rather have that than uh, not have it. Click uh, Applied. Let me go back into Edit. Again, Preferences, Levels. You can choose whether you want to install unsafe updates and they call these at dangerous updates out of refresh and ignored updates and cancel but when I put the uh, preferences and I always selected security updates it will always install the security update even if it may be a five I'd rather have the machine crash from a security update than crash from a problem so anyway we've got all of these selected and you'll notice here I've got some fives, but because they're security, I want those put on. And I'm going to click Updates. You choose how you want to handle that. Again, you've got Authentication, Authenticate, and that should be pretty much it. The only other thing I'm going to actually do to this machine is, after the updates are installed, I'm going to verify that it restarts. So after the downloads, then the software has to be installed. The updated software has been installed. Update Manager says your system's up to date, so I'm simply going to close it. I'll also close the welcome screen. And then just simply what I'm going to do is do a restart. And shut down. I'm going to do a restart simply to verify that everything's still working. So here it is on the restart. Okay, for the uh, username and then the pass. Whoops, please enter your username. I guess I must have not typed that in correctly. Please enter your password. Click OK. And that's it for the install of Linux Mint 17.2 Rafaela and updating all the software into a virtual box virtual machine. Thank you.